excited for today. You know, we're mixing things up here at Careers Bus Show, the show. Um, I'm going to go into the car and go get my guest. Yes, I did say car. So keep on watching so you don't miss anything. She's on the front page of our Careers publication that's out today. So make sure you grab yourself a copy of the Road of the all the miners item as well as the Namibian Sun. So follow me as we go get my lovely guest. As I mentioned, we're here with Helena. Hi, Helena. Hey, guys. Oh, hi. <laughs> you know what? I'm even like, hey, guys, but of course, everybody that is watching. Yes. How are you guys doing? I bet they're fine because, I mean, you're on our front page of careers. I know. And, know? I'm, and I'm sitting here and this girl is, the, she's so tiny. She's driving this <laughs> big car. Yeah. And I'm looking here with her like petite body and I'm just like, okay. You know I stop it. But how are you doing? Um, well, today mm -hmm. I am a powerhouse. Yeah, <laughs> you know, um, I really enjoyed writing that art, um, article about you, uh, really. Thank it you was, so much. I really had fun. Yeah. And so can you just please tell our careers viewers mm -hmm. a little bit more about yourself, you know, your background, where you grew up, where yeah. you studied, all those things. All right. So I am Helena Gaifiwa. Mm -hmm. Earlier she pronounced my surname correctly, which is <laughs> such a... I'm just like, okay, feeling. you know, yeah, because so many people pronounce my surname. I don't know, but you know what? I don't blame people because yeah. obviously different languages and we say things differently. Yes. I am from uh, the most beautiful town in Namibia. Go argue with yourself. It's called Swakopmund. Mm -hmm. okay. Coast girl. <laughs> it's the most beautiful town in Namibia. Mm -hmm. I was born in Arandas, but that's like a by the way thing. And then I grew up in Swakop. I uh, lived there my whole life, actually. Lived my whole life in Swakop. Okay. And um, had such a love and a passion that is for events and media. Um, surprisingly, um, what I studied is not, it's, it's so far from what I'm doing okay. right now. Yeah, like so, 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 so far. <laughs> so every time, like, even if I have a conversation with somebody and I say it, and they're like, wait, what? what? <laughs> How? You, Why? Yeah, but wait. But anyway, that, mm -hmm. that is uh, for another day. So, yeah, I am, um, for most of you, maybe recognize my voice on radio. Uh, I think that is so amazing. The other day I was in a taxi mm -hmm. and um, I don't know, I was talking and the, the taxi driver was like, are you Helena? <laughs> I, I, in my heart, I had nothing like, I was screaming. Was yeah, like, like, oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> but I was like, yeah, so obviously um, radio, uh, passion, my first love, energy one, heart of the fam. Mm -hmm. And then of course, um, television with TBN did uh, name gospel. Um, Hit and gospel yeah, rock up for a while, and then after that moved on to um, One Africa, where I anchored news. Mm -hmm. And um, I think after that, I touched on so many other things. I obviously in the event space, I uh, actually did the Namibia Careers Expo, which wow. was which was um, we did it across the country, oh. basically a platform where young people can come and decide what and who they want to become. Yeah, and how was that like? That was that was that, that was that was an experience on its own because mm -hmm. we I learned so much. We went to places where people told me they want to be mathematicians, for example, and yes. I had no idea that was a thing or a career. Yes. Um, uh, and then again, we w the beauty of that is we traveled to so many. We traveled to a lot of towns. Mm -hmm. uh, we went to especially in the north. I think it was very. Um, it was how do I say special for me yeah because um, it was actually telling the kids that look you can be you don't have to be a teacher mm -hmm. or a police officer or a doctor you know you the norm, typical careers that people opt to go for yeah the, the careers that we are told mm -hmm. uh, I remember when I was growing up I was telling my dad I want to do media he's like what's that yeah <laughs> he's like wait so you want me to pay you to study to go read news like, you know <laughs> <laughs> so um, that that was very I very very close to my heart because I believe it's important to um, not only educate but also just give information to young people so yeah. that they know that they have options yeah. yeah so don't you miss like you know being in front of the TV you know your anchor news days like looking back at it um yeah um, <laughs> with my serious face and I'm like this was your news on one Africa TV and I no smile no smile <laughs> 
Not even, no. You, you know, um, on news once, um, mm-hmm. I remember I had to read um, an, an article yeah. and I was talking about, I think, a Chinese um, minister. Mm-hmm. I had to pronounce his name. And you know what with, with news, there's the, there's the teller, teleprompter, yeah. so you are reading. Mm-hmm. And his name came and I was like, I'm, in my mind, I'm like, I'm not going to read that. Because <laughs> I don't know how to pronounce it. Yeah. <laughs> so those are the moments um, I when I think back about news and so forth, I yeah. miss. Uh, of course, with radio, I, 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 I love music. I love local music. Yeah. Um, I miss being in studio. I miss talking to people. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, it was, I, I will still, I still love it. Uh, mm-hmm. But obviously now. Yeah. yeah, we're on to other things. We're on to other things. <laughs> <laughs> so can you, you know, you're part of the Be Free movement yeah, yeah. Um, for the First Lady's office. Yeah. Just please tell us a bit more about that. Is the First Lady going to watch this? <laughs> yeah, she, she's gonna, she knows my zone, you know. <laughs> I was going to say I get goosebumps, but I'm like, I'm professional. Yeah, professional. Pro- professional. <laughs> <laughs> I think uh, with the Be Free movement, mm-hmm. whoa, what a milestone. You know, what a, when, I, when, 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 when I, how do I put it? When I started working at the office, yeah. uh, for so long, I think, I'm not sure if I was doing my job correctly, but yeah. that is because I was just in awe. I was just like, just trying to like register like oh my yeah. gosh and, and she would walk in and i'm yeah. just like that is the first lady, that is the first lady. <laughs> <laughs> but um I, I love it i love it so much mm-hmm. and i think uh what i love the most about be free is because we are you we yeah. represent the youth mm-hmm. we take part that is in those uncomfortable conversations that nobody wants to have yeah um the be free movement is not just about um coming and having conversations and talking to young people Mm -hmm. but actually understanding the root cause of so many problems that young people are going through Mm -hmm. Uh, we go to we go into um, different different places the other day we had a be free uh, that I was in a mixed settlement that is uh, that is just a few um, kilometers out of Windu. Mm-hmm. We went to places like Osire, we went to places like Tsungkwe, mm-hmm. and we are just talking to young people and engaging them. But what I think I love um, specifically about Be Free is that we are telling young people that, look, you can be who you want to be, yes. wherever you want to be, and your circumstance does not define you. Yes. And we actually come and we table those conversations. We sit down and we say, you know what? If sex is the problem, let's mm-hmm. talk about it. Yeah. What, what, why, why is it a problem? Why are we still practicing if it's not safe? Why, yes. What is it that as young people, what is it that is um, leading us to doing these things? Yes. So um, with the Be Free movement, really, really excited to be a part of it, really mm-hmm. honored to be a part of it. And um, I think every young person um, should be part of this movement because we channel conversations and champion anything and everything yeah. that a young person is. I really love that because you know most of these conversations you guys mm. channel into it's conversations yeah. that people don't have in households. Exactly. You know they're stigmatized. Yeah. You know topics. Imagine me talking to my dad about sex. Okay? Yeah. <laughs> like he'll be like, huh? <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> he's, try, he's gonna like try and process. Yeah. What yeah. did this girl just like ask me? It, you yeah. Know? Like like you they will come take it as like disrespect. Yeah. Yeah. Actually. And and that is what we're trying to do because there's such a big um, into. Um, think it, uh, like, like there's such a big gap mm-hmm. between young and old. Yeah. And so many times, I think the young people we we want we, we want the the, the the elders to be on our pace. They yeah. must think like we do. They must mm-hmm. do the way we want things to be done. And it takes time. It does. So this is where we now come in and we say these are the conversations that you can obviously not have at home, mm-hmm. but we are open and we are willing to sit down with you and talk and to you. And have this conversation. And have this conversation with you. Wow. Yeah. So like we're in a car. You I know. know. <laughs> you know, a whole bucky double cab. She's so petite, girl. I'm just saying. Like so whatever like, you see. Yeah. <laughs> so like when you you, uh, um, you know, when you drop your son off yeah. um, at school and mm-hmm. you're on your way to work, yeah. what jams do you listen to? Since you mentioned, like, you love music. I love music. So, like, what is it, like, <laughs> what's your go-to, like, your playlist? Let's, um, just, let's just get into that yeah. moment, you know? <laughs> so, with my playlist, um, it's very mood-based. So, okay. um, you will find me in the morning, um, depending on my mood. But okay. your... I, lo- I love local music. That's 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 not like that's not even a thing. So you like, like a supporter of like local music. I am like this little groupie. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, yeah. like secretly in my heart. I'm like, <laughs> the dog. I'm 
you're like this little groupie like yeah you i was going through my album the other day and i saw a note that i got from the dog when i was in high school really like, oh my gosh <laughs> like fan girling like fan and honestly on my playlist um i love pdk so so mm-hmm. so 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 much pdk is on my list gaza yeah. the dog um i love sally you know what Ooh, i just boss madam boss madam <laughs> variety of things um but in the morning i love to obviously i love to listen to radio yeah uh, because uh, you know you have such a busy schedule so mm-hmm. you don't necessarily get time to sit down and read the read, paper and yeah. stuff like that so energy 100 fm breakfast show with bezel Mm-hmm. Every morning, every all the morning, time. <laughs> all the time. <laughs> it's the go-to. It's the plug. She's plugging you guys. Yeah, I'm plugging Please you guys. <laughs> I'm plugging you with 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 the breakfast show, and then of course in the afternoon um, with Nashon. Mm-hmm. But otherwise, I listen. I listen a lot to radio. So Energy ninety nine. I listen to Wave National. So yeah. I actually listen to a lot of radio, and then in between there, I'll put on my CDs. Nice. Yeah. So like. What's one of the moments in your career that mm-hmm. really, you know, molded you into this person that you are today? Because we know we all have those moments that yeah. happens to us and then we're like, we realign now, the yeah. structure. Yeah. So can you just tell us that moment for you? What was that? Um, I think I think it's actually just growth, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, for, for example, like um, I wanted to touch on like with Simply You magazine, when you yes. started Simply You magazine. Uh, when I started with the SMPU um, LAFA, with the SYM LAFA in 2017, mm-hmm. I had to make a decision, am I going to stay and remain on radio and television, or am I going to be in behind the scenes yeah. and see how I can improve, complement, mm-hmm. or add on to the growth of the industry. Mm-hmm. So that comes with growth. That comes with, you know, I want to do more. I want to yeah. do more than what I'm doing, and I want to be more. Yeah. Uh, but also for me, I am raising a boy child. Mm-hmm. And as a single mother, I think the biggest panic you have is, is, is am I doing this right? Yeah. Am I teaching him the right things? Yeah. Am I role model enough? Mm-hmm. And I think that kind of pushes my growth faster because I'm in such a hurry actually to show him that, hey, you can be whoever you want to be. Yeah. Look at me. I am doing this. You know? I'm so doing if, all these yes, things. Yeah. I'm doing all these things. And if I can do it, you can also do, do it. it. Yeah. And I also come from a... Um, from a very small town mm-hmm. where obviously the young people in the town that I feel so you know sometimes you you take it on and then you feel like you're kind of responsible yeah. for other people yeah so I feel like I have taken that space where I want to motivate so many young people and tell them that you can be whoever you want to be mm-hmm. don't don't put yourself in a box don't let society define you don't yeah. let um, don't let anybody tell you. I mean, look at me. I am you know? from the streets of Tamaraskia <laughs> and I've been sitting a in a testament. Yeah, sitting mm-hmm. in an office across the first lady and youth advisor for yeah. Alma, where I sit on conference Zooms. And because Alma is um, the chairperson, is President uh, Kenyatta from oh, Kenya. Wow. So I'm just, so for me, all wow. of that is just, you can be whoever you want to be. Mind blowing, yeah. mind blowing. So you mentioned. Uh, um, Simply You magazine. Yeah. So why? With Simply You. With Simply You, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I think with the magazine is, um, I saw, I, I personally felt there was something missing in our industry, uh-huh. and I, I used to get so angry. You know, like even until today, people say, ah, young people don't like to read. Yeah. Namibians don't like reading. Namibians yeah. are this, nye, 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 all uh-huh. of that. And I actually, I've always wanted to do a magazine. That I was always passionate yeah. about it. When I was in high school, yeah. we had a, a, a gossip magazine in high school. Ooh. We're going to talk about the toilet stories. Where I <laughs> talk, who spoke the stories? Yeah, but. About that. <laughs> <laughs> but um, at some point, I did a research on magazines in Namibia. I looked at the local magazines that we have. Yeah. And I did a research on, per average, how many magazines do people buy and so forth. Then I saw that we don't have a lot of local magazines, magazines. that are bought, yeah. but per average, my research then, you have about 40,000 magazines that are bought from outside the country wow. per week. Wow. 
So in my mind, I was like, so if peop- if forty thousand people are buying magazines in the country, mm-hmm. who are these people, Ooh. and where are the lazy people? <laughs> yeah. Because clearly somebody is buying a magazine. Same, yeah. So that is actually where I think my my the launching of Simply You came with so much hunger, so mm-hmm. much frustration, mm-hmm. so much anger. It came from a place to show that look. We can okay. have our own, own magazine, magazine. Yeah. and we can have our co- own content. Yeah. And that is when you look at Simply You magazine, when we started it, it was pure Namibians. And it was for me just a platform to celebrate Namibian personalities. Because I felt the industry was growing so much mm-hmm. and radio, television, we were doing enough. But I felt with a, a publication, we can complement it. Yes. But also most importantly, I looked at um, the bulk of the young people in Namibia. Um, mm-hmm. These are young people that don't have, that don't necessarily have the access to the televisions and the so forth. Yeah. And uh, that is when you look at something you magazine. Our biggest, our biggest reads are actually in the rural areas. Wow. You know, this is where, like in the, like in the villages and so forth. Yeah. This is where we have a lot of young people wow. that actually um, buy copies of the magazine and read. And read. So That's nice. I just sat back and I'm like, I don't know who. When when people say. Namibians don't like to read. Which Namibians? Which Namibians? Please <laughs> identify, point Please out. Please show trans- me. Show me. <laughs> I love the fact that, you know, so I came across like whatever you get yourself into, yeah. do research yeah. Yeah. about it. It's very, very important. Yeah, you need to do research and you need to understand um, mm-hmm. whatever it is that you're launching a product, yeah. um, you're starting a business, whatever it is that you are doing, you have to do research. Yeah. You have to do research. It's very important because you need to understand what you're getting yourself into mm-hmm. and you need to understand your market as mm-hmm. well. So um, yeah. uh, I think that that is what I do all the time. I try and read as much as I can. I try and understand mm-hmm. as much as I can about everything. And then, yeah, just run with it. So any advice you'd like to give, you know, the fellow young Namibian girl yeah. or boy that feels really inspired with this interview and the article that's in our Korea's publication, the Namibian Sun, Republic Kane, and Algomina Zeitung. So, <laughs> what <laughs> advice would you give them? Wow. Are we done? Is this like, say your last words? Yeah. What? Sure. It was like two minutes. Yeah, I really enjoyed this. My but zone, I need more time. <laughs> Can I get like a whole week? <laughs> Don't worry, I have your number. We're going to work something out again. A part two. A I'm part on two it. is coming. I'm on it. <laughs> All right. No, I think first, uh, first and foremost, I'd just like to say thank you so much to my zone. Mm-hmm. I think it's very, um, please don't um, ever think that what you're doing is not appreciated, mm-hmm. especially by just us that you are putting out there. Because just by putting our stories out there, you are inspiring people. So <laughs> keep doing what you are doing. Mm-hmm. Um, because even today, I received so many messages, and some people saying, Oh my gosh, um, there was a lady that actually, um, shout out to you if you are watching. She texted me, she said uh, her student read the story yeah. and she cut it out and she sent me like a, a picture on how she pasted it in her book. Oh and I word. don't know the student, I don't know their life, I don't know their story, yeah. but it's because of you that you put my story out there, <laughs> yeah. it can inspire someone. So wow. keep, like, don't stop. I know when you call us, you don't pick up. <laughs> but don't stop. Don't stop. Mm-hmm. Keep doing what you're doing. And honestly, the publication, the stories that you're putting out there is reaching so many people and it's changing so many people's lives. So I, I think my thank yous is just going out to you. Thank you so oh much. Oh my goodness, Helena. <laughs> where are the tissues? Where are the tissues? <laughs> yeah. But I really enjoyed writing about you and I find you very inspiring and you're yeah. doing great. We see you. We see you, girl. We see thank you, you so shine. Much. Thank you. <laughs> there we have it. It's Helena Gaifiwa and it's Monique Adams. So from myself, and Helena Gaifua. It's a good <laughs> bye. <laughs> bye. Wow, guys, that was an amazing interview with Helena Gaifua. I really enjoyed it. And Helena, I love you. You're you're part of us now. You're family now, basically. And now we're gonna head over to the part two of the show, where we will go to vinyls. My colleague Desiree did a great job by interviewing one of the workers at work at vinyls. So watch the next video and enjoy. Wow, what an amazing interview Desiree had with one of the workers that's working at Vinyls. I will really check my schedule and make time and go pop into Vinyls, you know, drink a cup of coffee, have karaoke night, good times. Now we head over to the Bank of Namibia bursary handover ceremony. Check the following video for some video footage. 
Enjoy. People sitting here in front of us are especially unique and are different from all other bursary recipients that the bank has had ever. I'm saying this because they have set themselves apart by having great results during 2020. 2020 was the year as never before. It was unprecedented, it was difficult. We had something called the COVID pandemic. Wow, wow guys, I really enjoyed myself. I hope you guys did too, but this is just the tip of the iceberg. Expect many more amazing and interesting guests on this show. But now it's the sad part with what I hate. I hate it, but it's the weekend. We need to love and leave you. So stay safe, hand sanitize, wear your mask, and yeah, careers this show ahead. Bye. <laughs>